Hello, everybody. It's SD Medhaven here today, and I just want to talk to you guys about a rare, like a rare occasion, a rare match, and something that you normally do not see. So, one thing I want you to keep track of is the ammunition loadout that you see here, and um, also the equipment. Um, and before we start, we'll actually go ahead and go over to perks. Yeah. So starting off, Born Leader, Rapid Loading, Steady Aim, Clutch Braking, Off-Road Driving, Snapshot, Track Mechanics, Sixth Sense, and Situational Awareness. A very basic loadout, nothing really crazy to go off about. That's just a standard 9 perk loadout for heavy tanks for, my, for me. Now, my IS-7, this has been kind of a tank that I've torn apart and I've put back together a couple of times. And um, there's moments where... I, I had someone the other day talking to me about free-to-play. I used to do a lot of free-to-play stuff on stream, and then I stopped, and that's just kind of what it is. Uh, today we're going to be using the replay system to take a look at the replay and go over the match I had in this yesterday. But before we jump into that, I actually have something that I want to start doing, and sorry for everyone. Uh, yesterday I was busy, it's been snowing like crazy, and by the time I had everything done and situated, I just... Did not have time to do the stream for Tuesday. I know that some big things are happening. I have no idea what they are, but I'm going to be checking them out after this video more than likely. But I have a request for everyone in my community. Everybody. It doesn't matter at all. I, if you guys have a good match and you want someone to go over it, or let's say your friend has a good match and he says, Oh, I wish I had a way to show this off. Send it to me. Take a screenshot, send it to me, add me as a friend. I want to go over replays. Um, it's something that needs to be done. Essentially, I want to start working with the uh, Wargaming developers and start making suggestions. Uh, a couple of the suggestions that I put into the competitive community have finally been added to the game, which was actually last week's patch notes. They added in a couple of things that I mentioned beforehand. I completely forgot about it with my... Yeah, just this shot and everybody else are doing really good for the comp community and the replay system. But now I think it's really time that we start hitting that replay system itself because it's pretty wonky. It's a lot better compared to what it was a couple of months ago, but it's changed quite a bit. And it's nice to see that they're doing something that's going to be beneficial to the game because being able to get content out and making things work correctly. Speaking of which, fast. Last match, Dragon Ridge. There we go. But primarily... There should be a way to get content out that's not off of a single creator. I think that as a single creator, it's cool that we can do it. We can jump on and do this and not really worry about it. But having this, um, the HUD next camera, follow mode, turn off HUD, uh, it does kind of suck. Ooh, follow mode's actually kind of cool. You can essentially lock it. That's a really nice little feature that they added in. And uh, you're actually... Wow, it's all cinematic. You don't even have to touch the controller. It's doing it by itself. That is, I guess, a decent little thing that they added. But right here, enter sniper mode. You don't see the reticle. I would like to see the reticle. Um, but it's not there. But I want to be able to go over replays from other people and have matches and, you know, be able to dissect. Like this match here, it's going to be concepts. We're going to be pausing in between matches. And I'm going to be showing off the ways that I play my IS-7. So... With this run and playing the, the game today, I kind of felt like being a bit aggressive to a point that I am trying to get the game volume. Uh, 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 there we go. And it was, um, I, I decided to load nothing but standards, essentially. Five premium rounds was all I gave myself access to. And where's the reload? I don't see the reload. But the IS-7 is one of the tanks that... It, it has a lower standard pin, but you have a 130 millimeter gun. So you have enough overmatch to be able to go through 40 millimeter plates. And there's a 499. I believe that's the first shell of the game that landed. But there's a lot to the game. And being able to go over to content like this is going to be amazing. So let's go ahead and start diving into this. This position right here, let's actually go ahead and pause. So if you get aggressive right here in any pike nose or haul down tank that's fast enough, you can actually go in reverse Get your front tracks lined up to about here. Reverse back. Have your lower plate covered by this little mound. Currently, I'm sticking out just a tad bit, but it's not enough for the super gunk to be able to spot me out. Well, not speak, spot me out, but see me in general. Oh, wow. This is reverse now. Uh, right goes down. Left goes up. Can they... Re re is there settings to reverse that? That's funky now. Let's go ahead and jump back into it. I do like how a little bit of pressure slightly elevates the camera and a lot is like, whoa. 
Okay, 474 and into the other Super Conk off in the distance here. I do believe that these guys were platooned. It does not tell us inside the replay. That is sad. But now down low, I see that we're going to be taking a rush here. Side shots into the VK4502B along with the Panzer 7, the VK version of the Panzer 7, so the VK721K. And we're just going to be throwing out some side shots here. 486. And just this position right here in Dragon's Ridge, all the way over in, let's say, E7, this little backside here, you can get aggressive against the tanks right here, prevent them from pushing over. And then if you need to drop down to support the team that's down low here, you can see exactly where you're able to get the shots from. Sniper mode. See, it's a little bit lower than I want it to be. I kind of hope, because the way it angles out is like it centers out with the tank. It would be nice if they were to do, redo the replay system to make it to where we can actually see the reticle and where it was aiming at prior and actually track the gun properly rather than a horizontal flat line on the tank. Whoa, something just... Oh, that's a new speed mode, clicking in the right thumbstick. I'm sorry. For me, I'm checking out a couple of the new features that they've added into the game. Um, so for the VK, real fast, let's go ahead and pause. The VK, one thing to show off here is that it did not hit the lower plate, but actually, you can go through the gun mantle of the VK7102K, 70, 7201K, I'm having a brain fart. But the left and right, you have these little triangle pikes here that you can actually go through if you are aiming at them. And it's only like 240 millimeters of effective armor, so it's easy to tear through. So far, still maintaining full health without much of an issue. Uh, this zoom in is really wonky. Zoom in, zoom out. See, it stays center with the tank. Coming around, we're going to take our time. It's all about maintaining a certain distance between the opponents right there. Aimed at the uh, gun mantle on the VK. Easy pin. Let's go ahead and rotate around. Right here, though, it's it's best to keep distance in the IS-7 because you want to stay below his gun but not allow him to get your lower plate. And if you get too close, what he can do is he can actually overmatch the... Whoa, okay. Yeah, it's a little bit funky now. He can overmatch your back armor right there, which is 30, and then inside your gun. Um, so your little hatches here, they're only 30 millimeters. So if you get too close, it'd be able to pin. But if you keep the right distance and play against his gun depression, he's unable to do anything against it. And off in the distance here, we're going to be looking at a Panzer 7, a decent shot into our side, into the spaced armor. And we missed, but this play right here, I really like this, because this is all manually aimed. And we're going to go manual aim straight into his weak point, and we hit the ammo rack of him. Uh, he did repair the ammo rack, but then watch a second one. So our goal is to try and place it in the same exact spot we had it before. There's another ammo rack. And it's just all about keeping the aggression and staying close. And now here, the Panzer 7 does not have that weak point on the gun mantle. He did block that with a shell. Good play. But the gun mantle on the uh, Panzer 7, you cannot go through this one. So you actually have to use the actual weak spot, which is on the sides. And there we go, 424. And then a little bit of traveling around the map. So let's go ahead and fast forward this a tad bit here. So far, it's 9 to 8. And then that drops. So it would be nice if they didn't make that drop. We're actually made it to where you can link stuff. There we go. Centurion. A-V-R-E. Uh, this season is known as H-E Hell. If you guys uh, don't agree with that, um, I'm sorry. But that is my opinion. And artillery and their hit points. It To me, it feels wrong to shoot artillery with that many hit points. Uh, M46 Patton here, though. We're going to go ahead and drop him down. 199 damage. And... Uh, Bat chat gets hit by the 261. And me, I was really hesitant in firing. I am loaded. I didn't want to fire at him because it just feels wrong that artillery has this many hit points. And it's essentially a damage farm is what it feels like. And right now it's down to 5 to 5. So let's go ahead and pause this. Rotate around the map here as we're going to be approaching from A9. Currently we're looking at the Centurion AX right here. It is 4 to 5. Oh, that's right, you can click in the thumbstick now to really not benefit. Okay, where's our ally tanks? Uh, looks like a super conch. I don't know if that's an ally tank or not. Uh, no, that's an enemy. Where's the allies? Replay system is really buggy. There we go, he has to get spotted for him to pop up. Uh, Centurion and E5, they're both stuck right here. And I'm traveling with a bat chat. So... Coming back, I'm marking the map at C7. 
Um, or, yeah, just marking the map a little bit. Telling him to kind of go around and flank the bat chat. I do believe he went around and flanked. Uh, a little bit weird, seeing that the map is not working properly. We don't know where the bat chat is, but bat chat is actually approaching from the rear. And then the first premium shell that I fire right there is into the tortoise's hatch because... Well, Tortoise has got a really thick hatch. 250 pin is not going to handle that. I don't want to use up the rest of my ammunition because I've only got 10 rounds left out of the 30 that the IS-7 comes with. So, running low on ammo by this point. And I fired my first premium shell into the hatch of the um, Tortoise right there. Just because 279 millimeters of armor, I do believe it's 279. I could be wrong, but I know 250 will just constantly bounce. A lot of traveling. It is now down to a 2 versus 4, so we're up against a Super Conk, Centurion AX, E for the M, 46 Patton, with a Bat Chat 25 ton. So right here, uh, one thing that I want to call out, I'm saying cover me from D4. Uh, D4, this is a position of the map that I do wish that the Bat Chat would fall back to. Uh, later spoilers, he did not fall back. He's only on 279 hit points at this point, but if he was to come back to, let's say, D4... There's these bushes and a tree that's actually already pre-knocked down, which would have been a lot easier to use. But he could have broke down this building right here, knocked this tree down towards me, as we know the last location of the enemies was inside this area around here, which means that they're going to primarily be fighting us in this area. And an, a capable flank from here, which is kind of the reason why I wanted him to come over to uh, D4, which would allow me to work the bottom of the ridge line over here, spotting out targets but then I could get flanked off from the right side. That sensitivity increase is really wonky. It's kind of got like a curve effect for anyone who knows what curve effects are. Um, curves are really weird whenever it comes down to um, controller sensitivity because it's like you apply a little bit of pressure and then it curves and ramps up. Yeah, really weird in the replay system right now. Ah, I have it in the slowest. All right, normal. But this corner right here, just going to be playing it. Uh, Centurion AX, it's really all about taking my time. Found the lower plate on the Centurion because we were lined up perfectly. The next shell, however, this took a little bit of effort to go into the hatch. Honestly, though, with the Bat Chat being as close as he is, um, Hat Man, I kind of wish he would have gone back because it would have made this a lot easier to handle. And here we go. We're going to go take as much time as we can aiming for that hatch on the Centurion AX. Goal is to try and do as much damage as possible without overexposing. There, we found the hatch. And uh, then right here, we're going to go ahead and rotate once more. I do believe I swap shells. I don't know if it's going to say I do or not. Doesn't seem like it's going to say that we swap shells. Because I was loading a high explosive because my goal was I wanted to hit the top of the uh, super con because he was coming over on those 39 hit points because I can splash him for that remainder of 39 hit points. And I didn't want to really risk it, but right here I'm backing up. I swap back in the AP. Kind of sucks that I don't see a load counter anywhere on the screen, which would be nice to see. And then as you guys can see, Hazman is still really close. As we can see, it's not popping up too well. 287 hit points remaining. I am still full health at the end of this battle. And if Hazman would have backed off and provided assistance from long range, he would have already had shots in the Centurion AX and shots on the E50M from D7. But here we go. Going to aim for the tracks, do 565 damage. Hazman gets taken down by the M46 Patton, which is coming up from behind on the far back section. And now it is just a match of me getting overwhelmed, still on full HP, dropping the uh, E50M. There we go. Let's go ahead and load up. The goal was trying to maintain an angle, a little bit too much of an angle there, against the uh, Centurion. But now, finding a shell, find it, find it, find it. And... No? Just looking around a little bit. And... Delivered. 840 hit points remaining, 440, because the M46 Patton's hitting me, and then the uh, Super Gun Cup in front. And the goal here was just to try and go in for the kill put a tracking shell that would actually penetrate the super conch from this angle uh, because I was going to be heading a little bit further right. But sadly, I got set on fire by the M46 Patton from full health. And, you know, I'm not here to stop and say that Hasman, is that his name? Has Hatmans? I, I'm not here to say that, you know, you messed up. You know, it's just it, you learn from experience, and this is one of those matches that you're going to learn from experience. But one thing about this match that really stood out to me 
was not the fact that I died, but it's the fact that you look at this guy's ammunition loadout right here, which is 11 premium rounds remaining, 15 standards, respect, but no premium rounds remaining. Let's go ahead and go back. And then look at me real fast. We got six. Me, I ran out of standard ammunition. Okay, and I loaded 23 rounds of standard and only five premiums. And right here, I fire my second premium round of the game. And so this entire match, I only fired two premium rounds, 23 standard rounds. And I don't know if we're going to be seeing the score screen, but I do know it's in the garage. So this is just an example that you're actually capable of doing amazing with standard rounds as long as you know where you're aiming, the positions you take. The IS-7, it likes to kind of play around with its prey and stay at a range that prevents them from getting the gun in the lower plate but making it to where they can only shoot the top and the turret. And I really like to play like that. So It's an aggressive play style that's extremely difficult to get. Um, but once you learn how to do it, it is amazing. So yeah, I logged in an hour ago, and this right here was done yesterday on the 21st at 1238. It was 9,000. 181 damage dealt with six not six six nine nice six thousand nine hundred and sixty damage ricocheted one detection 23 critical hits is that critical hits i wonder if that's legitimate critical hits i gotta double check this performance report uh shots fired 25 penetrations 22 critical hits seven okay thank you um that's a bit disorienting to see critical hits there should have been shots pinned. But the the thing is, is like being able to throw out 25 shells and pin 22 of them. And the 22 that you pinned was two premiums and then 20 standards. Like that's really good odds. Especially, especially against some of the tanks that I went up against inside this tank. So for me, this is going to be the start of it. I understand that it's uh, not as well as it could be. But it, it is what it is. Speaking of which, I forgot to get a... Yeah, we'll just do one like this all fancy-like for the thumbnail. Maybe. I'll probably do it later. But you guys, seriously, if you have matches that you want shown off, the best thing to do is take a screenshot of the um, score screen of the game, send it to me in a message, and then I'll take the time out to add you as a friend, go through, search for your name, and find the timestamp... So the timestamp, the reason why I want your guys' um, screenshots is because at the top right of the screen that you see here, it, it gives the date and the time, which will make it easier to find your replays if you want me to check them out. Other than that, you guys, it's been fun. Uh, I'll be back on track next week, and we'll probably have to do some backstepping, so more than likely um, that's going to be what it is. Uh, but this season, I don't know if anyone disagrees with me, but it is the season of HE Hell because it's nothing but HE being fired everywhere except for that match. So, I'm out. You guys have fun. It was it was a blast. Uh, IS-7 for the win. Standard rounds. Um, also, the uh, pay-to-win aspect of premium consumables is stupid. Fix it.